think you've had good eggnog until you make your own. And then you know better. Six large eggs. They're the core ingredient to make nog thick and rich and frothy to create memorable holiday moments. Half a cup sugar. Mix until pale yellow and fluffy. About two minutes. One cup heavy cream. Freshly grated nutmeg. One teaspoon cine mold. Eighth of a teaspoon ground clove. Heat it until it's warm through but not hot. Slowly temper the eggs one to two ladles. Back into the milk mixture. Don't walk away. Keep stirring. Until it reaches 180 degrees, coating the back of a spoon. That's called nepe. It's French. Strain. Perfecto. Add the whites. Quarter cup sugar. Froth it one minute. For a classic eggnog, Add the meringue. Mix it legit and frothy. Two teaspoons pure vanilla extract. Quarter cup dark rum. Chill in the refrigerator three hours. Shake periodically. Cinnamon. Freshly grated nutmeg because you're fancy. Chevy tip. When you're making sugar cookies, place the dough into your refrigerator overnight or pop it into the freezer. Look how perfect that is. 30 to 45 minutes. That way your cutouts are perfect every time. Sweet, crispy. Hard shrimp. So damn good. All purpose flour. Garlic powder. Cayenne. You like spices. I heard. Two eggs. Add the milk while whisking, creating a batter. That's the texture you want. Extra large shrimp, peeled and deveined. Go along the back, pinch the tail, remove. Clean the junk. Two pounds wild shrimp, dredge them. <laughs> Italian breadcrumbs. Panko, make some crispy. Toss. Add the shrimp into the breadcrumbs. Toss. Like that. You can do this several hours ahead, cover, refrigerate it. Heat neutral flavor oil, 350 to 375 degrees. Don't overcrowd it. Five, two minutes tops until golden. Don't overcook it. If you overcook it, it'll be tough. Hit it with salt immediately. Soaps it in. Freshly squeezed lemon. My spicy remoulade. Today we're making garlic buttery potatoes. They're smashed. One and a half pounds of baby potatoes. Cold water to cover so they cook evenly. Push your salt. Boil until tender, eight to 10 minutes. Drain. Return to the pot. The heat of the pot will evaporate the excess water. Eight <coughs> tablespoons unsalted butter. Three tablespoons olive oil. Three tablespoons. Five cloves, minced garlic. Saute medium low heat, one to two minutes until you smell the gag. Gently press, just to break the skin. Brush both sides with the butter. Top with the garlic. Salt vigorously. Pepper. 425 degrees until slightly crispy. Freshly squeezed lemon. Parsley, because you're fancy. Insanely tender, soft, yes. Perfect dinner rolls. First we make the tongue jump. Half a cup whole milk. Half a cup water. Quarter cup bread flour. This method causes the bread to be softer and fluffier. Continue cooking it, making a paste. Let it cool. One cup warm water. 10 grams active dry yeast. Two tablespoons sugar. Let it sit 10 minutes until foamy. Like that. Four and a half cups bread flour. Two teaspoons kosher salt. Two tablespoons sugar. Stir. One egg. One yolk. On low speed, add the egg mixture, yeast, and tang jang. A quarter cup unsalted batter, room temp. Knead the dough, low speed, 10 minutes. The dough's gonna be sticky like that. Boil a large bowl, thinly coat it. Remove the dough. Transfer to the bowl. Proof until doubled in size, one to one and a half hours. Spritz an extra large baking dish. Punch the dough. Divide it, making 18 pieces. Use the countertop to grip it, forming little bows, little bows, into the pan. Keep it covered. Back to double proof, one hour. Brush your buns with egg wash. Makes them pretty. Into the oven, 375 degrees, until lightly golden, about 20 minutes. While they're still hot, brush with melted unsalted butter. Mild and salt, because you're fancy. That's what I'm talking about, baby. Wait, wait, just, just wait. East your eyes. We're making cinnamon rolls. Use my dinner roll recipe. Don't forget the tongue junk. It makes them incredible.
incredibly soft. While the dough is proofing, we make the filling. Three quarter cups sugar, two tablespoons ground cinnamon, two teaspoons Madagascar vanilla powder. Mix. Punch the dough. Lightly flour your surface. Roll it out into a rectangle, 16 by 12 inches. 12 tablespoons unsalted butter. Soften. Spread it over the dough, leaving a half inch border. Sugar and cinnamon mixture. Starting at the long end, roll it up. Tight. Butter a nine by 12 inch baking dish. Divide into eight. Use a serrated knife. Little chefy tip between each cut, clean your knife so it doesn't look sloppy. Add to the baking dish. Cover it. Let them proof until doubled in size, 60 minutes, room temp. We don't want to melt the butter. For the glaze, two cups confectionery sugar, quarter cup whole milk, pure vanilla extract. Just eyeball it. Whisk. Slightly thick like that. Into the oven, 375 degrees, 30 to 35 minutes. Re-whisk the glaze. French onion gratin, because you're fancy. Four to five Spanish extra large onions. Don't use sweet onions, there's too much sugar in them. They'll turn to mush. Sliced into half moons, like that. Don't cry. Half a cup unsalted butter. Add the onion, kosher salt, pepper. Cradle the heat between medium and medium low. Two tablespoons fresh thyme. Saute until uber tender, 30 minutes. Half a cup. Cognac. Don't reduce it all the way. We want the flavor. Homemade beef stock. Eight cups. Bring it to a gentle bubble. Reduce to a simmer. Ten minutes. Day old baguette. Slice into half inch rounds. Butter the toast. Season. Push your salt. Even your bread. Into the oven. 375 degrees until toasted. Royer. Great. Take a big fat garlic clove. Rub the toast. Little bed of cheese. Toast or cheese. Under the broiler until melted and bubbly. Three to five minutes. We make a bolognese. My way. Mirepoix, carrots, onion, celery. Or in Italian, sofrito. Small dice. Three quarter pound beef chuck cut into cubes. Three quarter pounds pork butt. Cube it, grind your meat. If you don't have a grinder, use a food processor. Like that. Four ounces diced pinchetta. Render the fat, two minutes. Half a cup each. Two tablespoons unsalted butter. Saute until tender, about five to six minutes. Pepper. Remove to a bowl. Add our meat. Cut your salt. Pepper. Saute until brown, five, six minutes. Quarter cup tomato paste. Massage. Couple minutes. It builds later. One cup Chardonnay. I don't like red, it's too tannic and heavy for the sauce. This is a good one. My homemade chicken stock. Three cups. Return the pancetta in the veg. One cup whole milk. Cover. Into the oven, 325 degrees. Freshly grated Parmigiano Reggiano. Pepper daddy. Only from scratch. You are in for a treat. These are the best. Four cups whole milk ricotta. Line a strainer with cheesecloth over a bowl. Super important. Add the ricotta. Plastic wrap on top. Add a plate. Anything heavy on top. Don't skip this step. If you do, your filling will be too loose. Into the refrigerator overnight. Liquid is the enemy. Get rid of it. Add the ricotta. Two cups confectionery sugar. One and a quarter teaspoon cinnamon. mold. Three quarter teaspoon pure vanilla extract. Mix. Three quarter cup good quality extra dark chocolate chips. You want a good cannoli? Use good quality ingredients. Fold them in. Cannoli shells from scratch. Because you can. One cup, double zero, Italian flour. One tablespoon, sugar. Quarter teaspoon, cinnamon. Quarter teaspoon, kosher salt. Stir. Two tablespoons, cold vegetable shortening. Work it in the flour between your hands, like that. One egg yolk. Only add the yolk. Save the whites. Four tablespoons, marsala wine. Add a small splash of water until it cools together. Knead the dough five to six minutes. Cover it, let it rest one hour. Roll out the dough to number six on speed six. Take a four and a quarter inch ring mold, cut your circles. Re-roll the remaining scraps until you use all the dough. Keep it covered so they don't dry out. Brush with egg whites. Wrap the dough around a cannoli mold. Seal it closed. Hold them down so they don't bobble. Fry two minutes until golden. Look at this sexy beast. We're making rib roast. Six and a half pounds, bone in. 
Trim a little of the fat and score it. Sheet pan with a rack. Liberally add kosher salt all over. We're gonna dry brine it into the refrigerator six hours to overnight. Don't cover it. Remove at room temp to remove the chill. One hour. Brush it with avocado oil all over. Now we add pepper all over. Remove the excess salt and pepper from the sheet pan. Otherwise, it'll ruin the pan dripping. No low temp for this big daddy. Into the oven, 350 degrees until cooked 120 degrees. Internal temp from medium to medium rare, 16 to 17 minutes per pound. Let it rest 30 minutes. Now we make the horseradish cream sauce. One and a half cups sour cream. One third cup horseradish. If you're using the juice, use the zest. Two tablespoons lemon juice. Pinch kosher salt. Whisk. Remove the ribs, save the bones to make beef stock. Don't overcook it. You overcook it, it's no good. It defeats its own purpose. Juicy, tender, fresh rosemary, because you're fancy. Now we make Yorkshire pudding. Old school. Use the fat trippings from my prime rib 10 inch cast iron skillet. You could also use a popover pan, although don't use this one, it always sticks. Just choose a different brand. Three tablespoons beef fat. Heat the pan 375 degrees until smoky. Five to 10 minutes. My popover batter minus the oil because we're using the fat trippings. Without beef fat in America, we call them popovers. Add the batter, all of it. Back into the oven, 375 degrees, 35 to 45 minutes. Remember, don't open the door. She is a beaut. Serve with my rib roast. Don't forget the gravy. Or with any Sunday roast. Thai chili, Brussels sprouts. Always choose the smaller ones. They'll be sweeter, tastier, and less cabbage-like. Remove them from the stock. Have them. Neutral oil. Hit it good. Toss. Push your salt. Pepper. Spread them apart. Into the oven, 425 degrees. 25 to 30 minutes. Three garlic cloves. Minced. Ginger. Pick a spoon. Peel it. Minced. Thai bird's eye chilies. Split them. It release the heat without overpowering the dish. Grab a wok, medium heat, get your oil, garlic and ginger, and the chili. Saute about 30 seconds. Two tablespoons soy sauce. Two tablespoons mirin. Splash fish sauce. Lime. If you're gonna use the juice, use the zest. Squeeze half of it. Cornstarch slurry. One teaspoon cornstarch. Add the slurry. Stir until thickened. Cut the heat. If needed, add a couple tablespoons water to thin it. Cilantro and mint because you're extra fancy. Rosemary salted candied almonds. They're so good. Mmm. Silpat or parchment. One cup whole roasted almonds. Into the oven, 300 degrees. Three to five minutes just to warm them through. Fresh rosemary. Pinch. Pull. You can use that as a skewer. Chop it. Add it to a mortar and pestle. Lord of salt. It's French. Like that. Two quart sauce pot. Two tablespoons water, one third cup packed light brown sugar, quarter teaspoon lemon juice. It'll prevent the sugar from crystallizing. You wanna make sure it's evenly incorporated. Medium high heat, don't stir. Bring to a bubble. Once the bubbles break the entire surface, about two to three minutes, gently tilt the pot. Once it reaches 265 degrees, cut the heat. Add the almonds. Quickly remove to the sill pad. Quickly pull them apart with two forks. Once you feel it start to tighten up, Stop, otherwise it'll cloud the candy. Let them cool, but still slightly tacky. Add the rosemary salt. Perfect good for you snicky snack. Eat them just as is, or toss them on a cheese board for a gourmet touch. Sweet, salty, savory. Eat your almonds.